learning is a treasure that will follow its owner everywhere. How eVPN accommodate certain features when a MAC address are learned by a single leaf? How remote P able to load balance towards the multiple leaves? How to perform fast convergence if any failure occurs? How to prevent bump traffic from echoing back from a multi-home Ethernet segment? Hello friends, my name is Sabi and in today's video we'll discuss how eVPN address various features using route type 1 which is called as Ethernet Auto Discovery Routes. eVPN support for multi-homing and nodes to multiple P's and P-types. eVPN Active Active Multi-Homing enables with Route Type 1 and Route Type 4. In multi-home P, advertise two eVPN route types of auto-discovery routes to all other P's by MPBGP. These advertisements are referred to as auto-discover per ESI and auto-discover per EVI. EVPN was originally focused on constructing layer 2 VPN over IP wide area network, which is eVPN MPLS. In initial VXLAN solution for data center, no control plane is defined. VXLAN tunnels manually configured and host addresses are learned through traffic flooding. This method is easy to implement, but it causes a lot of flooding traffic on network and make network expansion difficult. To solve this preceding problem, eVPN is introduced as a control plane for VXLAN, that is eVPN VXLAN. So BGP eVPN VXLAN and eVPN MPLS concept is absolutely same. Let's see how this is achieved. For multi-homing sites using lag, we need to understand the concept before we move further. The concept of ES Ethernet segment, the concept of ESI Ethernet segment identifier and eVPN instance which is EVI. EVPN instance represent the same role as IPVPN similar to VPRN in Nokia, VRF in Cisco and Juniper. It assigns import and export RTs. eVPN instance represent VNI in data center and VPN on a P. When a customer site is connected to one or multiple P's via set of Ethernet links, then this set of Ethernet link constitutes an Ethernet segment. For multi-home site, each Ethernet segment is identified by unique non-zero identifier called Ethernet segment identifier. An ESI is encoded as a 10 octet integer inline format with most significant octet sent first. Two ESI values are reserved. ESI 0 denotes the single home site. ESI 0 cross FF is known as max ESI and it is reserved. eVPN has many features. In order to address those features, it has some route types. So we have route type 1 which is Ethernet auto discovery route which has been used for aliasing, split horizon, mass withdrawal. To advertise the MAC and IP, we have route type 2. To control over the bump traffic, we have route type 3. For multi-homing, in order to select the designated forwarder, we will have Ethernet segment routes. To advertise the IPv4 and IPv6, we have route type 5. In this video, we will deep dive in route type 1 and we will see that how it will do a load balance, how it will do a fast convergence and how it will prevent loops eVPN route type 1, which is Ethernet auto discovery route. The first one is Ethernet AD per ES route. In Ethernet AD per ES route, it is being used to advertise ESI label to the peers. As active active site leaves must advertise an ESI label in the AD per ES routes. The non-DF must append the ESI label when replicating traffic to the designated forwarder. This has been used for mass withdrawal or you can say fast convergence and split horizon. With this AD per ES route, we have route distinguisher which identify the leaf, the ESI which been configured, the ethernet tag ID is set to be as max in this and ESI label extended community will carry the labels and the route targets. The second one is ethernet AD per EVI route, which has been used for aliasing for load balancing. The route distinguisher used to identify the leaves, the ESI is set to be as ESI value configured, whatever the value will be configured. Here the Ethernet tag ID will be zero for the VLAN based services and the route target extension will carry the route target which being configured inside EVI. So this is the difference between uh, AD per ES route and AD per EVI route. So in this AD per ES route, the tag is max ET, but whereas in EVI route, the tag is zero. In the extended community, we'll see that it carries the ESI label 
with the all active multi homing with the target but in case of EVI route basically it will carry only the route targets let's see the aliasing feature in EVPN when a C is multi home to multiple P nodes using lag with all active redundancy when P relies on the control plane learning and from the C1 side when it sends an ARP and get hashed to a single link in a lag and then get advertised the MAC address to the other leaves then how the remote P will load balance in this case. To address this issue EVPN introduced the concept of aliasing which is the ability of a P to signal that it has a reachability to an EVPN instance on a given Ethernet segment. The Ethernet AD per EVI route is used for this purpose when a remote P or the leaf receives a MAC IP advertisement route with an ESI it considers that the advertised MAC address reachable through all the P's that have advertised reachability to the MAC address via the Ethernet segment. This reachability is determined by a combination of Ethernet AD per EVI route and AD per ESI route. So there is a corner case when AD per EVI route receives by a remote P before it receives by the set of AD per ES routes. In order to handle this corner case, the Ethernet AD per EVI route must not be used for traffic forwarding. To avoid this race condition with aliasing and backup, the AD per EVI route must wait until the AD per ES route to be received. This is the all active aliasing. When we have a single active multi homing, the backup path is used. The backup path is used in single active redundancy mode. In this case, P is also advertised that it has reachable to a given ES using the same combination of Ethernet AD per EVI route, but the single active bit set to 1 in this case, whereas in all active, the bit set is 0. A remote P that receives a MAC IP advertisement with an ESI that advertise MAC address to be reachable via P that has advertised with the combination of Ethernet AD routes and it installed that route as a backup path. So when MAC address is learned by only a single leaf, how the remote leaf able to load balance towards the multiple leaves is done using Ethernet AD per EVI route. So the Ethernet AD per EVI route is being used for aliasing and backup path. Now we'll see the feature of fast convergence or mass withdrawal. In EVPN, MAC addresses reachable is learned via BGP control plane over the MPLS or VXLAN network. In absence of fast convergence mechanism, the network convergence time is function of the number of MAC IP routes that being withdrawn. By the P encountering a failure for highly scaled environment, this scheme yields slow convergence. EVPN defines a mechanism to efficiently and quickly signal to the remote P the need of updating their forwarding table upon occurrence of any failure in the connectivity of the Ethernet segment. Upon failure in connectivity to the attached segment, the P withdraws the corresponding set of AD per ES routes. This triggers all the P's that receives the withdrawal to update their next stop adjacency for all MAC addresses associated with the Ethernet segment. So how to perform fast convergence or mass withdrawal if any failure occurs? So we will have AD per ES routes used for fast convergence or mass withdrawal. So the next is split horizon. If a C is multi-home to one or more P on an Ethernet segment operating in all active redundancy mode. If C sends a broadcast and non-unicast or multicast packets to one of the P, let's say P1, then the P will forward that packet to all other P's. But when it receives at P2, it will drop the packet and not forward it to the C. This filtering is referred to as split horizon. The use of split horizon filtering is a mechanism which is highly recommended because it prevents transient loops at the time of failure. In case of service provided domain, to achieve this, every bump packet originates from a non-DF P is encapsulated with a MPLS label and that identified by a Ethernet segment of origin. This label is referred to as ESI label and advertised to all the P's when operating in a all active redundancy. VXLAN encapsulation do not include the ESI label. So how we will able to do a loop avoidance in this case? So the answer to this is whenever we are using VXLAN 
in a data center environment, we have local bias, which is based out with the following behavior at the ingress and the egress leaves. At the ingress leaf, any bump traffic which has been received on all active multi-homing will be flooded to all local sub-interfaces irrespective of the DF or non-DF status. When the bump traffic received from the another leaf in the same segment, the leaf will simply look at the source tunnel IP and finds the packet belongs to the same Ethernet segment. And based on that, it will block the traffic. So, how to prevent bump traffic from echoing back to multi-home Ethernet segment? We have Ethernet AD per ES route used for split horizon. In service provider domain, the PE used the ESI label, but in data center, it use local bias. So eVPN route types, we have route type one, which is Ethernet auto discovery route. Per EVI, Ethernet AD route is being used for aliasing. Per ESI, Ethernet auto discovery route being used for split horizon and it will use for mass withdrawal. Thank you for watching this video. Hope you like it. Please share your feedback and questions in the comment box. I'll get back to you. Thank you.